He's a good boy. Hmm? He's a good boy. <laughs> He's a good boy. Everybody, welcome back to Antique Automotive Service. My name's Adam. Today I'm working on the 60 Buick again. I got my heater core back today, uh, which means I'm going to work on it. Um, one problem, the heater control valve leaks. Now, if any of you are familiar with the 60, early 60s Buicks, or any GM stuff for that matter, uh, sometimes they have an integrated heater control valve that bolts directly to the heater core and um, as of right now the only thing that leaks is the fitting here and it looks like it's just a, a rubber gasket I mean but it's not removable unless you disassemble this whole thing and I'm not even entirely sure how you can do that without ruining it and uh, there are re refurbishing places that you could send these things to have them rebuilt um, there's an NOS on, on eBay right now for 200 bucks, but I'm trying to get away from having to do that. So what I'm going to do is, uh, find an O-ring that fits around this. I'm going to clean this up a little bit, but, uh, I did find one that kind of fits around the outside edge of it. And, uh, I'm going to have to dunk it in water and pressure test it somehow. And if it works, I'm going to throw it in. Get you closer here so you can look at it. Here is the uh, heater control valve, and this is the spot where it's leaking from. And you could kind of, well, you could. It's very um, corroded around this area, which means it was kind of seeping around this area. I don't see any corrosion in here where it's another typical spot where these things can leak through the shaft. Uh, so we're going to hope for the best and get this o-ring on here I, may, I might dress it with some like faucet grease or something just to keep it lubed up and uh, get this thing bolted on and throw it in a tank of water and see if this thing leaks okay almost full bucket of water let's see if this thing works it's gonna completely submerge this and saw a bubble but I don't think that that was <sighs> anything uh, to worry about I don't see any air <sighs> nothing um, I do want to open the valve that's going to introduce uh, air to come through here Yep, and then, man, well, I don't see any indication that this thing is uh, going to be leaking. Close the valve back down. I got nothing. I think we're in good shape. I've got this bottle of soapy water here too, but I don't think I need it. Boy, I could swear I hear something.
surface, but that just could be, uh, that could be air escaping through the heater control valve itself because I don't think that's a real tight seal. I don't know. I'll go ahead and blow some air through this thing to dry it out on the outside, then we'll get it mounted in the car. Okay. I'm not going to be doing any real resto on this box. Just cleaning the barnacles off a little bit and put it together. Uh, oh, yeah. How does that go? I don't like that. There we go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now in the past, sometimes these um, record heater cores come back a little bit different size than the original because they're literally just uh, cores that are cut out of a, a bigger piece and, and soldered into the tanks. So there's a little bit of variation involved. in the sizing on these things which can be a little bit of a challenge when you're trying to fit it in a box that's just barely big enough to begin with then you're fighting size variance This one's a struggle, just a little bit. There we go. Those are started. Just need to get a quarter inch drive and tighten them up. Okay, so it looks like they had sealant around this inner box here. Um, it's still pliable, but there just isn't any left. I think it's box has been into before and it's just there's not much there. So what I need to do is make my own. Sometimes people like to use a 3M uh, strip caulk. I just use duct seal. It's this stuff that uh, comes in a pound brick. It's usually in the electrical section of your local uh, home improvement supplier. And I'll just roll this into like an eighth inch bead and just run it all the way around. Sometimes you need to cut it into smaller pieces to manage it because our subject it's whippy and floppy and I also like to just kind of pull on it a little bit to make it just that extra bit longer. I do this, I'm going to do this on the uh, outer box too, which means along this edge here, I don't know if you can see it or not, but along this edge here where these studs are, they're going to be mounted to the body of the car. Just kind of lay that there and I like to kind of try to stake it in place with my fingers just to kind of keep it from falling off. Usually it's not a problem if it's not dirty, but since we have a little bit of scuzz on here, it's uh, it may not stick too well until it's sandwiched in there. Extra stuff, just throw it back on the brick. That stuff never dries out. It's great stuff. Um, it looks like it just goes on just like this.
<laughs> There's the challenge with the heater core size. Uh, I knew I'd run into this before. I'd, I've done 160 heater core before and I ran into the same problem but it was 15 years ago when I did this and I don't remember what I did. I think I just forced it in but I'm not going to try to do that with this one. I'm thinking, yeah, I can just... We're going to get really close. I loosened up all these uh, screws that hold in the core itself so I can move this outer frame and I think um, we're going to be in pretty good shape. Still need, need, need to kind of persuade it over a little bit. Let me get my all. Yeah, really tight. Let's flip it over because the screws come in from the other side. Might just be able to. Um, persuade them in because they're only off by like a half hole half hole whole half jeez See if that works. Kind of persuaded it over with the awl and, and uh, pinched it in place with yield vice grips. And there's one. I have to do it to at least this one too. Adam, why are you doing this on the floor? I don't know. I don't know. Oh yeah, the, uh, <laughs> so I've got one, two, three, four, five screws, yet there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten holes, plus another anchor point over on the far side over here. Yeah, definitely someone's been in this before. Not maybe, definitely. I think I've got some extras to uh, fill in the blanks here though. Okay, I've got all 10 of those bad boys in. I'm gonna go ahead and make a seal for these guys. I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna seal around here as well. And I think the outer box is going to have to have something as well around these ho these pipes. I believe they're, yeah, I can't remember. I just can't. Now, I think I might have done this a little backwards. Because um, I'm looking at it. So I don't know if it makes a difference or not, but this frame that the heater core mounts to can be stuck up in there, and then your heater box can go in after that, and you can put your screws in there. But honestly, I'm not sure it matters that much. I remember how this goes together. I've got to get one cable through the box. Somewhere in here, there's a hole where it's supposed to route through. Maybe that's it. Go straight down there. Kind of looks that way. Wish I didn't have to wait two weeks to do this. So this. Yeah, okay. Huh. That's cool. Let's see if I can get 
get this control cable inside the box. So this control cable um, controls the heater control valve. Manually opens and close it with your... Oh, spot I don't know that that's the right hole though well, that's where that goes ow there's the heater control valve connection inside the box and the uh, cable is all connected up. The heater control valve is in the closed position, 100%. So you need to make sure that your heat uh, control is all the way up. And when you push it down, it opens the valve. And there is an adjustment on this. So let me get a pointer here. If you loosen this up, this cable sleeve will move up and down depending on... Uh, where your uh, the control is so what you need to do is take this all the way up into the closed position make sure this is all the way up and then lock this down wherever that falls in that spot and i've got one more control cable golly to connect right up there and the uh, lock is right there all right we are installed there's the cover plate for the heater control valve. That guy's connected up there. And uh, the uh, ducts are as connected as they're going to be until I get into this dashboard and replace all the flexible ducting. These uh, gauges, I am I want to get rid of them, but I hear they're worth a few bucks because they're some sort of a vintage thing. So I'm going to leave them there for now because they've got, I do have oil pressure and uh, water temp installed on these. The amp gauge doesn't work. It's not hooked up. Now getting over to the front side of this, the only problem I have right now, get this out, is that I don't have any speed nuts to hold this thing on. I've got one that I found in my stash that fits, but there's nothing in the trunk of this car that, uh, that has any speed nuts in it. No bags, no nothing. I do have all the heater control stuff on top with the vacuum diaphragm. Um, I don't have this little rubber boot, which sucks because that's kind of an integral part of the system. Um, yeah. So I guess I'm gonna have to stop on this for now and uh, grab some speed nuts and see if I can find the boot and whatever else I need to get this thing in. I lied. I'm gonna go ahead and take care of this outer box. Found some random nuts to use. I don't have the boot, which is disappointing, but I think I can find one. The uh, gentleman I bought the car from says he thinks he has it, um, but it's in storage and might be a minute before he can find it. I swear, I bought one of these 8,000 piece set cobalt kits and uh, they've, instead of stamping the uh, size on these things, they laser engrave them and they're really hard to read. I'm gonna pop this little vacuum can on next. It is the part that actuates this door on the very end over here. I had to find nuts for this thing too. 
I got no nuts for anything. And I'm not sure if this is upside down or not. I think it's upside down. I, I don't remember if this nipple is supposed to face out or in. I think it's supposed to face out. This should also have speed nuts on it. But none of the speed nuts that I have fit. Oh boy. Okay. Ugh. What's next? I guess I'll throw the arm on there. There should be a little barrel retainer clip that holds this thing on to the to this rod, but of course there's not. And it doesn't seem to want to de-vacuum. Hmm. For another day. Now for the little like electronic portion of this game, I believe this just goes like this. This guy goes here, and this guy is supposed to um, plug into a resistor that I don't have. And then this gets routed all the way over to the front of the intake. All right, he's got a plug in it right now. Probably a little long, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. This guy Oh, yeah. Oh, man. I think we're missing the uh, retainer for this guy, for the cable anyway. <sighs> so much fun. And it gets plugged in right there. And on the back side we have a one hole plug. Let's see if I can find it. There we go. I think there is a uh, a retainer in the back. Okay, I zoomed you in here a little bit. I actually found the speed nuts that go to this thing and the retaining screw. I don't know what that screw is. Oh, yeah, I do. It's, it's for this. Um, anyway. So, this is all the way off, and I had to figure out how to get this adjusted to where it would want to have 100% movement. And you kind of just have to play with it a little bit. This is the airflow, airflow or, or blower motor speed is really the, the answer. So that's tight. Now we've got full range of motion. That's really the most important part is just making sure you have full range of motion on this thing before you close up shop on it. All right, I've got a cover for this thing. 
and uh, also, uh, well, I don't have anything for this, which sucks, but we're 80% we're there. And then the last piece of the puzzle we have is this uh, cover. I can't remember. Does it go that way? Or does it go this way? There's two clips. One clip on top. here that I can't see anything for yeah uh, sure yeah there's still something screwy about this guy just don't know I don't remember enough about the one I did a hundred years ago to make a good guess all right I'm gonna hop on the old eBay and see if I can find a resistor if not I'll get in the on the uh, Facebook 60 Buick page to find a resistor and see if I can find this boot faster than uh, somebody else can find one for me now before I go plugging heater hoses in, uh, there's one thing that I really got to do is get this radiator flushed. I'm going to try to do it myself uh, with my new little uh, gadget tool, but I don't know how well I'm going to be able to get it done. I'm going to have to blow through the engine and back up and backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards a bunch of times. But it's cold. It's cold outside. I can't really uh, do that right now. Maybe. I don't know. Can't see much. But judging from the brown caca, I think it is brown in there. I'm going to hold off until probably tomorrow on this. It's only in the low 30s right now outside. And I'm running out of daylight. But I did... Uh, Go ahead and do some vacuuming in here just to see what I'm really up against on the rust situation. So it looks like about a, you know, maybe a 15 by eight spot on each side that needs a patch. Not terrible, not something I'm super interested in doing either, but uh, you know, I don't want to put brand new carpet over that. Back, the back ones are nice. They're a little surface rusty. I did pull this up and uh, it looks, it's just, you know, had some, had some previous moisture in there, but it's super solid. After uh, blowing out my colon, taking that thing out of here, just wanted to see what we were up against on uh, trunk condition. I did do the foot stomp test on the floor here and it seems solid. I don't. Nothing, uh, you know, there's some crap falling down on the floor. I don't know where those two things go. If anybody has any idea on where these two guys go, please tell me. I've looked everywhere, tried to put them all kinds of places. There's just, I mean, I don't know where they go. Not a clue. But I'm thankful that I, uh, I have all of the spare tire parts and uh, jack and all that fun stuff. This stuff is original. I'd like to keep it that way. I don't want to put new stuff in if I don't have to. You can see the little paint dab right there. That marks the center of the weather stripping so that it knows, you know, whoever is putting this in knows to, that this uh, seam is going to be off center. That's pretty typical of these cars. I think I'm going to bail this evening. Just ran out of steam. 
and start early in the morning. No thermostat. Awesome. Okay, day two. Um, as you can see, I have drain the coolant or am draining the coolant and I've got the upper radiator, radiator hose disconnected and the, and the lower radiator hose disconnected at the uh, water pump or timing cover and what I'm going to do is use this tool uh, which introduces compressed air and uh, water at the same time and basically kind of agitates a little extra as opposed to just trying to run water through I'm going to do it this way and I'm going to go backwards and then and then just switch back and forth and blow this radiator out as much as possible. And then I'm also going to do the engine block probably through uh, a heater hose connection or maybe even just the uh, uh, water outlet there because there's no there's no uh, thermostat in it, which may account for some of the overheating. I don't know. I guess we'll find out. A lot of water coming out of this thing. I was going to try to get the camera a little bit closer, but it, uh, I'm afraid that I'm going to get the phone wet. What the? I'm just going to see what comes out when I introduce water to it by itself. A little brown, not much. I don't see anything that's uh, alarming coming out of here. It really looks clear as day. I'm gonna try to blow it backwards. I mean, it is clear, clear, clear. I'm gonna try to go back now the other way again. Curious to see how this engine block is gonna go. Yeah, super clear. I'm gonna try blowing through the block now. I guess uh, that radiator hose out of the way. I'm just gonna go straight down and see what happens. I mean, it's just this color is yellow kind of brownish yellow nothing serious doesn't look any different than the stuff I pulled out of the car or out of the radiator problem is I'm going straight straight into the timing cover and it's basically just going straight out 
Um, no, maybe not. It does have to go through the crossovers. I'll keep sh shooting. Through the magic of quality Chinese Amazon products, we have an inoperative microphone on me. So I am doing a voiceover right now. So what I'm doing right now is uh, back flushing the opposite direction on the engine block. Checking to see if there's any particles or anything coming through the top side. And I'm just kind of letting the air rip there. <laughs> it does look kind of uh, kind of translucent coming out that way, so hopefully there's some stuff getting knocked out of there. And here also I'm just trying to agitate it a little bit more by pulsing the air through there instead of just letting it flow, But because I think it helps break up some of that crap that's in the engine block. And here we go with one more blast. Just letting it rip. After several rounds of this fun stuff with the water, um, we're coming over to the passenger side and I'm looking at the fan and uh, noticing that it is quite a bit away from the radiator. It's also a clutch fan, which is not something that comes standard on a non-AC 60 Buick. So what I think some, what somebody has done is remove the stock fan and spacer and replace it with a clutch fan, which, uh, you know, can be good. Um, depending on what your cooling issues are, but uh, w when you take out the three and a half inch spacer, it creates a problem with flow uh, through the radiator, which also causes overheating problems. So now we have to get into a situation where we need to find a spacer and possibly another fan. Boom, boom. <laughs> okay, that's enough of that crap. Little did I know that I would be spending the rest of the afternoon with a broken mic hooked to my face. Uh, so right now I am pulling the thermostat housing out so I can put a new thermostat house or thermostat in to replace the one that doesn't exist. Now on these thermostat housing gaskets, be sure to make the surface as clean as possible, get all of the old gasket off with a razor blade, and make sure the uh, the housing cover is as flat as possible so you can take a, you know, run on a flat surface on top of some sandpaper and it should flatten out pretty well. Also you can kind of see me digging on that inside edge, uh, trying to get, there's a little surface that the thermostat sits on and that's uh, pretty important for that to be clean because it needs to sit below the gasket surface so everything can seal right. Here is the thermostat itself. The spring goes down toward the block. That's pretty much a general uh, rule of thumb on any engine. Make sure it goes toward the block. Seat that thing right inside that inset there. And uh, the gasket that I ended up getting had some sort of adhesive side to it, and I don't really subscribe to that, so I'm going to ignore it. And uh, just use my black RTV, real thin bead all the way around. Uh, this, you can see me doing that on the actual metal surface instead of the gasket, because it gets kind of a, to be kind of a mess if you try to run the gasket itself. So throw a bead on there and smear it around there with your fingers. And then set the gasket on top, like so. And then to the thermostat housing cover, same thing. Bead, and then smear with your thinner. Make sure you get that stuff all over your hands. Mm 
and grab your bolts and go to town. I usually miss the first time or two. Looks like I got on the first shot this time. But what I didn't realize is that I have forgotten the fuel filter bracket. One of these days I'll realize it. Probably not until I get it tight. There you go, Martini. Good job. Tighten your bolts down until they break. And let it set up. Now moving on to heater hose install. I actually thought about using the old heater hoses, but, uh, well, there was only one. Uh, and I've got a complete roll of three-quarter inch hose, so I just grabbed some off the shelf. And new hoses, new clamps. Always a good idea. much can I spill? Drinky drinky. While this thing is simmering, I think I think we're full, but um, I want to touch on the proximity of the fan to the radiator again, since this thing doesn't have a shroud, it's super imperative for it to be as close to the radiator as possible to eliminate any uh, bleed or or lack of efficiency uh, using the fan. So I, I think I was just under three inches, maybe like two and three quarter away from the radiator on the uh, clutch. And so I ordered a two inch spacer, so that's gonna bring us three quarters of an inch away from the fan or from the radiator. And that should get us as close as I feel comfortably possible to the uh, radiator itself. And that'll give us a little bit of wiggle room to get the fan on. And also uh, if there's any flex in the fan at all or deflection, it doesn't eat into the radiator. I've noticed quite a strong smell of fuel after I stop the car, or even actually when I'm running it. Um, it looks like we've got seepage out of the threads here, and it also looks like it may be coming out of the top gasket here, and it's kind of soaking some stuff, but also possibly there, and I see a lot of wetness back here. So it may be a slightly high set float don't know. I've had issues with these Rochesters before, and uh, it's kind of hard to get these floats where they need to be. And also, um, that guy is ripped. And that's very common for these things to be ripped like that, even though, you know, it doesn't take much to rip them. I don't know why they can't make them out of a better material, but that's just what we have to deal with. I also found something that might be contributing to the... Uh, running hot situation. I always check vacuum advance, whether it is holding vacuum or, or if it's function, I, sh I should say. And so here I've got the, uh, the suction tube. Completely not working at all. And blow right through it and I can pull right through it as well. So I'll have to add that to the list before I really um, make any other moves as far as trying to diagnose the running hot situation. So I'm also going to check timing, dwell, uh, you know, all that fun stuff. <sighs> Crap. I wonder if I've got another vacuum advance can somewhere. Well, after a month of Facebook wanted ads and ACA ads. I finally got the parts I need. I got a factory non-AC spacer with the bolts, factory fan, rubber boot that needs a little uh, softening up, and a resistor. And on top of that, this came today. Brand new headliner from SMS Auto Fabrics. 
I think what I'm gonna do today is just get the uh, get the fan installed with the spacer and the resistor. And what else do I have? Oh, the little boot guy. Um, and I'm gonna get those in today and then I'm gonna call it quits for this video because uh, that headliner is gonna be a lot. So uh, I already have the seats uncovered and the upholstery guy is gonna make an attempt to save everything but the fabric set pieces. Um, I do have the fabric coming from SMS, I hope. I They couldn't give me an answer on whether it's actually in stock or not. They say it's in stock, but they don't actually know until they make the order. And then you have to wait two weeks and then they can tell you if it's in stock or not. So if I called today, if I made the order last week, they still won't be able to tell me. So I'm gonna have to wait another week or two and then I can call them and ask them if it's in stock. And if it is, they'll sell, send it to me you know, four yards at $150 a yard. Super excited. Anyway, I'm going to get this stuff on. I got to clean the stuff off and paint it first, and then I can get it slapped on. Now, before I put all the effort into uh, <clears throat> painting this thing, I wanted to just slap it on real quick just to fit and make sure you can see how much closer this fan is than the other one. The other one was way back here. And uh, it fits perfectly on the nose of the water pump. So we are in good shape. Let me go ahead and take these off, get them blasted and painted, and we can throw them on the car. Okay, that should do it. Resistors on, boots on, fans on. Uh, yeah, that's it. So uh, I think I'm done for now. All right. I will see you guys on the next episode.